What up? We did oh, it. Oh, oh. It's been a bit. We only oh, missed oh. a week <laughs> in hindsight. It just feels like it's been forever. I don't it know does. what time is. Time is an illusion right now. Right. Um, it's also time been a whole lot longer since all three of us are back together. It so. has been. It's been ages. <laughs> I blame myself, I'm sorry. It was your fault, but, uh, yes. did you at least... <laughs> Damn. Oh. Oh, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> this is how we're starting tonight. Um... <laughs> uh, how were your performances? Wow, can I just say that Metro Rock Live absolutely rocked, like, oh my god, it was the best concert I've done to date. Um, I I am so proud of my team. Every single person um, who was in the, in the cast and crew this year was phenomenal. I literally cannot wait to start editing and um, put Metro Rock Live on YouTube. It's gonna be glorious. Um, I don't think people are ready. If they were, if they didn't see it live, I don't think they're ready for this. <laughs> Uh, if it tells you anything, okay, I will spoil one thing. Um, I guess you can kind of call this my dancing debut in a way. Nice. <laughs> I've never really had a dance number. Um, if you guys are familiar with Ochi no Ko and, and Peon, the, the, the character Peon, we did the Peon boot dance, um, and I, <laughs> I had my, um, dancing debut there. Um, nice. But yeah, uh, sang my heart out with all the homies, and um, I think it was wonderful to have an out-of-state performer this time. Mm -hmm. So we actually had a Kaiga Idol by the name of El Foxu from Minnesota. Um, they came all the way from Minnesota to rock out with us, and I, I blew us all away. Um, so uh, look out for Metro Rock Live whenever it drops on YouTube. I will definitely give links and everything on all my social medias. I'm just so proud of everyone. I just cried. Perfect. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Sounds like it was yeah. wonderful. It was so much fun. He he he. And of course, since um, I was uh, samurai themed this time uh, because my uh, song was from Sengoku Basara, um, I... I had so much fun bedazzling this uh, vest, and you guys will see it. But it took till 3 a.m. Yippee! No <laughs> sleep! Wee. It was so fun. It, it was totally worth it. It looks great on stage. Um, but yeah, look out for my samurai outfit. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Lamer, how was your week? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Since the last time we saw you. Um. <laughs> um well. <laughs> I mean, it's officially uh, heat wave and forest fire season for me, so I'm yeah. doing great. No. I can't breathe, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, happy summer, I guess. Yeah, happy no, there's, um, there's one in the valley. Fortunately, it's like up in the mountains, but, mm -hmm. um, and the fire crews are working real hard on it, um, but. It's still, there's too still close blue for sky. comfort. Hey, there's that is something. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we haven't reached respirator point yet. That's uh, not yeah. the respirator. Because there's usually a point in the summer where I need to wear my uh, spray paint respirator out um, into the outside world, mm -hmm. uh, and we're not there. So you know, silver lining. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, don't miss those days. But um, perfect. All right, well, uh, we've done our recap. Now let's recap what we're playing. Uh, we're back on Great It's Attorney Chronicles 2 tonight, Electric Boogaloo. Um, Electric Boogaloo. So let's uh -huh. take a look. All right, Sham Smear testified alongside Meterman, the gas company employee who he argued with. Meterman said he was looking at Sham Spear through his bricked up window all night, but it was dark. Oh, yeah, he was like total voyeur. It was a weird moment. Um, <laughs> Sham Spear's role play resulted in Juliet killing, kicking Romeo's ass, and he says he drank the tea an hour past midnight. Also, he ate his scripts. Uh, the jury got impatient and declared guilty, so we went into summation examination. Juror 4 turned out to be the wife of the gas company's owner. Uh, yeah, and uh, Minerman was spying on the house for gas fraud, which put everyone's trust in him into question and changed the four minds to continue the trial. 
Jam Spear denied being a thief and Von Zeek objected to its relevance. Quimby supervised Meterman, explaining why Sham Spear fell under suspicion to preserve Altamont Gas's reputation. Sham Spear's gas meter was so suspiciously void of money that they developed a new meter just for him, but they still got no concrete evidence of tampering. We found a fucking hole in it. Like, literally, it took us not that long to find. Um, so, I, I don't know how you missed that. They're like, we just can't see it. <laughs> Were you looking? Um, but they still got no concrete evidence of tampering. We found a hole in it and realized he makes fake coins with the soap, ice frozen by the window, then lets the coins melt through the hole. Uh, let's see. Quimby took offense to the machine being exploitably flawed, which we proved with the puddle in Gregson's pick. Even though Sham Spears' credibility has been thoroughly impeached, Von Zeeks pointed out that we still haven't proven he was specifically lying about his accusation against Natsume. We questioned the conjecture about the tea being poisoned and determined the water in the coins were frozen tea. That, that tea can be analyzed for poison. Our racism count was four, only half of which came from Von Zeeks, which I feel like is actually an improvement from last game, which is sad. Um... <laughs> Our hallowed chalice count is three. Um, if the counts are inaccurate, <laughs> Twitch sucks. Um, is so good. And as always, it is Mana's fault for being gone, for being too amazing and successful. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Why do I have to keep doing projects all the time? I Damn. know. How dare you? All right. That's so insane. We are back in investigation because we got to find some shit. Yeah. Forgot about that. Uh, all right. Oh, we haven't introduced ourselves. Hi. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> we didn't this actually whole... do introductions. Oh, we just talked. Um, you want to go first? Someone else want to go first? I'm clearly doing great leading. <laughs> Lemur, you go. Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Lemur. This was, I almost just did my Baldur's Gate intro. Um, <laughs> That's the way. <laughs> my name is Lemur. This is Lemur, and she's a cleric. No, um... <laughs> I do. Oh boy, I think I'm back on Judge. Yep. Susato. Yep. I do. I'm half the jury. I don't mm -hmm. remember if I'm anybody else. We'll find out. <laughs> I think I was E odds. Was I odds or was it? Yeah, I think I was odds. The yeah. odd number jurors. <laughs> I don't remember. Or maybe no. I was evens. I'm evens. Sure yeah. Well, I'll you're one of those. I I will give you you're that. You of... will be one of those. Yeah. I one of those will be correct. You're number one because he's a dick. Yeah. So yeah. I would assume so then that you are the odds. I'm even. <laughs> yeah, Lemur yeah. Stevens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's that's all I remember. <laughs> mm. <sighs> Hello, my name is Mana Bingu Ginga. I am your resident voice actor, and we <laughs> and also <laughs> I uh. I voice uh, Herlock Sherms and also a bunch of other crazy people. So um, if I switch voices and they all sound the same at some point because I'm struggling to keep up with whatever the hell this is. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> ah, excellent. And I'm Kels. I am truly our fearless leader here. Um, you're going to see me. Sure. I play Naruhodo Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Um, and yeah, that's kind of all there is about me. I'm doing great tonight. Oh, yeah. I'm Von Zeke, so Von yeah. Bitch. I am Von Bitches. <laughs> yep. All right. Let's 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 actually get into this now. 22nd of For February, 1.11 p.m., Naruhodo's legal consultancy. I oh, forgot she's got such a cute outfit. Yeah, oh, yeah we, we gave her steampunk. Yes. We changed yeah. outfits on people. We did. Because we get to play dress up in this game. I don't we think... love dress up games. Have we seen Herlock Sholm since we put him in his new outfit? I don't think so. I, I cannot wait for have. that moment. That is going to be so funny. Ah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have not. Um, Perfect. Oh, <laughs> we made it back in one piece. Just. To be perfectly honest, I thought we were finished there for a while. Oh, I know. What a lot of... Close saves. Shaves? Close <laughs> shaves. Um, there are so many carriages on the street of London. You were nearly flattened several times. Oh. No. Nice. I, I didn't mean that. <laughs> She's so cute. Yes, I know. No I wonder she has a boyfriend and a girlfriend back home. Like, look at her. <laughs> She's perfect. Peace. 
She's ballin'. Mm-hmm. It was a marvelous defense, Naruhodo-san. It really was. I was in awe of you. Oh! Um... Thank you. I feel like we're flirting now. Ooh. This is the 1800s flirting. <laughs> Are you going to show me your ankle next? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she is showing us uh, her upper arms, though. Very scandalous. Yeah, that's true. Uh -huh. Or... <laughs> <laughs> And now that your fervent exploits have won us some more precious investigation time, let's see if we can't find some new clues for court tomorrow. Yes, let's do that. Mm. Is everything all right? I suppose... I still can't quite believe it, that's all. That I'm here in England, working as a lawyer, I mean. And the old Bailey, no less. Fifteen minutes and we're already calling whore. Look, I have <laughs> one whole line and it is calling everyone and their mother whore. Uh, Valid. The truth is, it shouldn't be me, should it? It should be him standing in my shoes. It should be Kazuma. Oh, boy. The boy right. <sighs> down bad for this man <laughs> <laughs> we all are we're down bad for him um unless we can get bone from heaven so you know <laughs> Whoa. it was cosmo sama's wish that you follow him to great britain and work alongside him yes i mean i never had the chance to ask him exactly why but well he clearly had a plan I don't know what that plan was, considering the fact we didn't know we were what we were doing when we got here. But, you know, someone had a plan somewhere. Oh. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. And you're doing wonderfully, Naruhodo-san. Naruhodo <laughs> um, I have no doubt that Kazuma-sama would say exactly the same if he were here with us. That's why I got this Ouija board. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> uh, look, um, is that, can you have like e sex with a Ouija board? <laughs> what is that e sex? What would it be? I feel like this is a rule thirty four kind of thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm gonna say yeah, probably. Yes. Damn. The only problem is you have to spell everything out, which I kind of feel would probably not be super sexy unless you had, like, a spelling fetish, but... <laughs> you could come with shorthand. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Sato-san. Thank you. Occult <laughs> sexting. <laughs> no! Exactly. Thank you. Oh my god, you guys. We do still need to find out why Kazuma was named in the sign of the four and what conspiracy Susato's dad is involved in. We have a lot of unanswered questions around Kazuma. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's dead. And the That's Ouija, board, Ouija board... <laughs> apparently, we've been more interested in occult sexting with him than, you know, asking him for answers, but... And this is, what, the late 1800s? Or early? I think, like, 1850s-ish. Okay, say. it's probably a little early for spiritualism, but, you know, it's a thing. <laughs> Hang on a little bit there, and we could be the beginners of the spiritualist movement. There we go! I don't know. All of it starting with a dead boyfriend. Isn't that how all good love stories start? Ooh, if it is yeah. 1901 or something, then oh, that'll work with okay. spiritualism. There we go. <laughs> Susato looks like she has a spelling fetish. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I concur. Uh, all right. Today's trial. Let's get back on track. It was quite a shock earlier to today, wasn't it? When the victim himself turned up in court and took the stand. I know. Not only that, but then finding out that he's actually a barefaced gas thief as well. Barefaced? That takes on new meaning when you play... Dungeons and Dragons. Oh my god, is he a druid? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, that was certainly a surprise to us all. 
For a while, it seemed as though everyone had quite forgotten about Soseki-san's son poisoning the tea. Careful of your phrasing, Susato-san. He didn't poison anything. And there's more to this Mr. Sham Spear than we yet know, I'm sure of it. Mr. Shamspear certainly wasn't the noble, upstanding man everyone thought he was at first. What's become of him, actually? I was told that he'd, uh, he'd be returning to the hospital ward where he was receiving treatment. Oh. Which one is that? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Okay, so the real-life visit of Soseki Natsume to Japan took place from 1901 to 1902. This is Victoria and era London, while well, Queen Victoria's reign ended in 1901. I know they gave us dates at some point, but it's been so long that, um, and also I am bad at history. <laughs> and math. So, <laughs> to be fair, there's not much I'm good at, but. <laughs> you're good at, listen, you're good at a lot of things. <laughs> Uh, let me see. Ah, uh, yes. He's at St. Bartholomew's, or Bart's as Londoners calls it. We know that place, don't we? Yes, we visited Miss Green there yesterday. It's the same hospital to which she was taken. Ah, uh, right. After Soseki-san stabbed her in the back. <laughs> Do be careful with your <laughs> phrasing, Nar Naruhodo-san. He didn't stab anyone. Perhaps we both owe Soseki-san an apology. St. Bartholomew's. Yes, we should probably visit the hospital later. Yeah, because that'll be a really fun conversation to have. He's been oh so fun to talk to before. So, we know that Soseki-san took tea to the victim on the night in question. But as he isn't the culprit, then obviously... Yes, the poison surely wasn't in the tea. But if that's the case, how on earth did the poison get into Mr. Shamspear's body? I'm sure we'll find a clue at the scene. There must be something in Mr. Shamspear's room that will help solve the mystery. Well, naturally, Scotland Yard detectives have been over the place already. But it couldn't hurt for us to have another look around, I think. Yeah, you know, really after we the took the teacups here. last time. <laughs> <laughs> We're so good. Definitely. Um, and I'm desperate to know the outcome of the investigation into the teeth that left on the bar of soap. Left in the bar. Well, if we run into Inspector Gregson, we could ask him about that. We're, we're all pretty sure Shamspear is faking everything. Does he even have poison in his body? <laughs> Maybe he's just a really good actor? Bad actor? What would that make him at that point? If we all know he's faking things. I don't know. My head hurts. Cosmo's wishes. <laughs> <laughs> this is too much Damn. big brain thinking for it's, me at this point in the day. Yep. It's 1030 at night. <laughs> I... Uh, Nah. Um, <laughs> Kazuma Asogi, the best friend I ever had, and a lawyer with such promise and really nice abs. <laughs> <laughs> he, and really nice <laughs> abs. <laughs> he really my saved brain me. <laughs> my brain auto filled while you were talking, and I just correct auto corrected to ass, and it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> and then I think it's like that's not what you said. <laughs> No. I mean, also true. So, yes. the best I mean, yeah, lawyer to boot like nice. with nice ass and abs. Absolutely. <laughs> the real question is how were his forearms? Because we know we have <laughs> yeah, yeah. a thing about that. We love forearms in this house. <laughs> ah. He really saved my bacon in that horrible incident just before we left Japan. I can still picture him now, looking so fierce and determined in court. And then after the trial, that crazy idea he came up with. We wanted to run away together, 
As a stowaway? Who was Cosmo? I don't remember. <laughs> I think it was me. Yeah. Um. Yes, you can find it inside my. Er, you can fit inside my trunk if you curl up small enough. I'm sure. No one will know. Cosmo, won't you tell me why? Why go to these lengths so that I can accompany you to Great Britain? Does he love you? I exactly. Like, come on. I've played enough Ultima games. <laughs> well, it's been on my mind ever since we got through that trial. That you really ought to go into law. Be a defense lawyer. <laughs> Feel it in my jellies. <laughs> uh, you've got a natural talent for it. Believe me, I guarantee it. But I've never even thought about becoming a lawyer. If I remember correctly, I study English. <laughs> well, you have plenty of time to think about it in the boat. Mm. Um, well, I can't force you, obviously. You'll have to decide for yourself. Chad is over here um, Frankensteining together our perfect boyfriend. Um, so <laughs> they have Cosima's abs, ass, and headband. <laughs> which I very much agree with that um, addition. Thank you. Uh, Sholmes' forearms and Susato's brain and heart and Von yeah. Zeke's legs. <laughs> You're so right. Mm -hmm. Like, that really is the best of everyone cobbled together. Mm -hmm. So. But anyway, London is the cultural capital. Okay. Is the culture, <laughs> cultural capital of the world. Sure, Jan. Uh, the city at <laughs> the forefront of everything. Why did I read that as the city of the forearms? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. It can't hurt for you to see it with your own eyes. Oh, you want to go sightseeing with me? Mm -hmm. No, that's true. I suppose, though. If you were to become a lawyer, then one day... One day... what? Oh no, never mind. Were you about to say we could get married? One day oh. we will kiss. Yeah. <laughs> uh <laughs> uh, Narahodo san? Oh, sorry. I was just thinking about Kazuma. Yes, he's forever in my thoughts, too. We could have been the cutest little polycule. Right? Man, missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. To change the Japanese judicial system for the better, that was his dream. We can even add in Suzato's girlfriend from home. Like, I feel like she would fit in. <laughs> mm, absolutely. Um, and that's why he so desperately wanted to come to Great Britain to study, of course. Yes, that's right. But... <sighs> yes? I do wonder if his true intentions lay elsewhere sometimes. I don't know. The thought just takes hold of me every now and then, that's all. How dare you. <laughs> <laughs> she looked so appalled. Uh, Donorohodo-san, what do you mean by Kazuma-sama's true intentions? Uh, I mean this. Take him to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his guitar! <laughs> 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 what did you think was going to happen? Uh, his katana? I never expected to inherit this sword after Kazuma passed away, of course. No, I know. It was because I asked you to take it. When I have it in my side and when I have it at my side in court, not in my side, uh, probably not very comfortable there, uh, I feel as though gives me courage. I mean, look. Yes. 
wearing a sword will give you courage no matter whose sword it is. So <laughs> Absolutely. It's like, so sharp and pointy. I think this is just placebo effect, but whatever. <laughs> um Actually, the night before he died, he told me a little about the sword. Karuma. That's right. It's a prized sword that's been passed down through generations of the Asogi clan. A Japanese man's sword is his soul, Ryanosuke, and can't be parted from... I can't be parted from my katana. Jesus. Karuma guides me. I truly believe that. Well, damn, he looks so cool saying that. What I the know. Fuck? Oh. So its name compels its wielder to slice evil in two? Uh, not that you would need much compelling. <laughs> On that subject, there's something very important that I have to do in Great Britain. Something you have to do? Yes. I'd appreciate you seeing it through with me. Uh, 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 of course I will. Whatever it is, I'll see it through to the end with you. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> Gay. <laughs> You're not I, knew, wrong. I knew you wouldn't let me down. <laughs> What did he mean by something very important that I have to do? I had hoped that the answer to that question would become apparent when we arrived here. But... As yet, I've not found a single clue. I see. Okay, well, um... That was fun. Hey, Suzato. Have I shown you my armband? <laughs> You've been wearing that ever since we arrived in Great Britain, haven't you? Well, it's what shows that I'm a lawyer, so it seems appropriate. I'm not sure that it really means much in this country, though, I'm afraid. I wouldn't say that. It might not be official, but it looks official. Often when the police stop me, I just show them this and they leave me alone. <laughs> You're stopped by the police often? Well, you know, I'm a suspicious foreigner dressed all in black with a sword at my t at my side. I do think it's probably the sword that's the main reason. Possibly. Maybe. Still, it makes me happy to see you wearing it and the art band. Yes, I made up my mind that I'll carry them always. This symbol of who I am and the sword Karuma. None of those are mine! <laughs> like, I literally stole them both off a dead dude. Um, do we want to go say hello to Mr. Sholmes and Iris? Sure. <laughs> Seriously, I've never seen you take that armband off. Even at bedtime or in the bath. I want a rubber ducky with a little, you know, armband on it. For him, I feel like that would be cute. Uh, 22nd of February, Sholmes is sweet. Well, hi, darling. Oh, 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 that's right, that's me. That's I'm you. Oh, you know, and Susie, Harry, you're back. Chat, I'm gonna need more details about your old doormates who got in trouble for clown hunting with a bat at night. What? I just, I need more details on that. Um... <laughs> That's a whole podcast right there. Mm -hmm. oh. Hello, Iris. You're in fine spirits, as always, I see. Oh, I am. And you look as immaculately presented as ever, Susie. Oh, you flatter me. I think Iris is technically the one who created these outfits. 
Yeah, I, I think so. so. I want to say that's what it said. Well, you couldn't have come at a better time. I just made a pot of tea. I'll set some cups. Really? Thanks, Iris. Uh, but actually, what is that foul smell? Oh, look, it's him. <laughs> <laughs> There's his outfit. Oh, oh it reeks. That's yeah. the, <laughs> the wanderers <laughs> return at last. Where on earth have the pair of you been? Um. We've been in court? Working. Charles. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us have jobs. Um. <laughs> oh, for Mr. Mustache's case, well, that was today, was it? I'm sure I mentioned it only yesterday, Mr. Sholmes. Oh, I'm sure you think you did. No! <laughs> Oh, well, we can laugh about it now. <laughs> so tell me, how did the trial go? Reasonably well so far. We've managed to escape without a guilty verdict, at least. Oh, really? I would have liked to see it. Well, you could have instead of whatever smell that is. <laughs> I was too busy smoking or some shit. And I must... Pass the time of day with Mr. Reaper again. It's been too long. Of course, you two are friends. Is Lord Von Zeke's an acquaintance, Mr. Sholmes? Naturally. There's not a person in the world who doesn't know my name, Mr. Narihodo. Not quite what I asked, but still. Did he swap close with Susato? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mr. Sholmes. Whatever is that odor? Yes, what is it? It's faint, but absolutely awful. Oh, indeed! That is the scent of victory, my dear fellows. Victory in science! <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Alright, I'll bite. What's he up to now? Hmm. Quill. Lord Barak Von Zeet. Yes, it's an interesting sobriquet. He has it, isn't it? The Reaper of the Bailey. Was the legendary prosecutor has fought for someone's conviction, that person is doomed. Even if he or she is found not guilty by the court, sooner or later the hapless still will vanish from the capital. But vanish? How exactly? No, oh, by falling under a passing carriage, or drowning in the Thames, or succumbing to a sudden fever, or quite, or quite out of the blue, just being set upon on a highwayman. There are numerous routes to one's final terminus, my dear fellow. It all seems a little far-fetched, really. <laughs> well, on the bright side, Mr. Moustache is fighting f fit for the time being, at least. That's not overly reassuring. If the rumors are true, though, the obvious conclusion would surely be that those acquitted are, well, by Lord Von Zeke's own hand. Oh, as it happens, Miss Susato, that is quite impossible. Oh? Why? Naturally, the man very quickly came under such suspicion. However, whenever these incidents occurred, the Reaper always had a cast-iron alibi. Really? And so his reign continued, but five years ago... He vanished from the courts, never to appear as a prosecutor again. That is, until you arrived in the country, Mr. Nariodo. He just thought it was cute. It's fine. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, so I've heard. In fact, it was the very day I arrived, when I was thrust into that trial at the Old Bailey. That bitter fight to the death coincided with the Reaper's resurrection. And really did end bitterly indeed. He was very salty. And here you are, facing Mr. Reaper again. 
Sorry, you know. I don't know if you're just incredibly unlucky. Or incredibly unlikable. Love you too, Iris. I... <laughs> I think it goes deeper than just yeah. me. I sense a general loathing... Of all Japanese people. The bitch is racist. <laughs> the a bitch is racist. Okay, yeah. we're gonna continue on this thought before we go into the foul smell. What about Japanese people? Oh god, what happened? With Mr. Natsume, who I'm currently defending, being Japanese as well, as Ms. Susato and myself, I felt it even more keenly in court today. For some reason, Lord Von Zeek seems to have an inherent disdain of the Japanese. Oh, indeed. It is an uh, interesting observation. Yeah. He just never pulls the person he wants on all the gacha games. And that's why he's bitter. Do you know something about it? Do you, Mr. Sholmes? Hmm. Ooh. It was about ten years ago that Barak von Zix chose to enter the legal profession. However, it was a dark and stormy night, yes. <laughs> However, before all that time... The young man's closest companion hailed from the Empire of Japan. No. Yes. What the? Tell us more, Mr. Sholmes. Was it Susato's dad? I want to know. Oh, that'd be tell so more, funny. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Oh, I will tell you more. Well, I believe I've made it clear before. I'm unable to tell you anything about the affair. Oh, but... So it was an affair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the veil will be lifted on the events of the past in due course. I have no doubt. For now, however, it is Mr. Mustaches who is most deserving of your attention, I believe. All right, what's the foul smell? Damn it, we won't learn about the races so, and why. What is that indescribably foul smell? It's my cologne, probably. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> most probably this, I would say. What is that? Yeah, what is that? <laughs> oh, my dear fellow, it is, of course, my latest invention. Uh -huh. A chemical test that can identify whether or not a tea is genuine at the drop of some, well, well tea, yes. Oh, oh my. Huh. There are some unscrupulous sort of manning the stalls along some of London's less frequented streets. They regularly sell those purports to be high quality tea. But is in fact merely dyed leaves of drab flavor. Have you ever considered you might just be an asshole to those people like you are occasionally to us and they're just serving you pee? Most likely, <laughs> yes, actually, yes, yes. Like, that's definitely not tea. Well, that's a certainly unsavory behavior. Oh, well, so when one is presented with what happens to be black tea, one must be careful, Iris. Our little mad I'm scientist. Ready, Hallie. Let us add a drop of my chemical to this cup of tea here. Um, do you see what happens? Mm. It's turned completely black. And what a foul odor it's giving off. Indeed, the blacker the tea becomes, and the more foul the odor, the better the tea is. But won't it ruin the tea? So you can't then drink the tea? Oh, it would appear that this cup was particularly fine. Darjeeli. That's very ingenious. But what do you do with that black liquid now? <laughs> oh. Well, why dispose of it naturally? Surely you wouldn't like to drink it, would you? Oh, his titties were right there. 
<laughs> anyway. There does seem to be a rather obvious problem with your new invention, Mr. Sholmes. Hmm. That's why this chemical test is merely a test, my dear madam. Right. I'm not going to drink a test. The point is, we are entering a new era of science in the world of criminal investigation. Also... Yes, forensic science. Oh, these are such exciting times. Suzato, you and Emma would have gotten along great. Absolutely. I regularly engage in the scientific experimentation alongside my unofficial consulting detective work. The Herlock Sholem's method will be the foundation upon which modern investigative technique is based. This little tea indicant was a happy byproduct of my ongoing forensic science research. Forensic science? I suppose I should find out more about that. Forensic science? So, your tea test, is that an example of forensic science? Oh, indeed it is. An essential tool in case that hinge on the knowledge of whether some tea is of high or inferior quality. Not a huge number of cases, then. Mm, perhaps a more practical example is required. Fingerprints? Mm. Not yet accepted in our courts as evidence, I might add. Really, we are dragging our heels there. I hadn't even heard of them until recently. Which is partly why I undertake research in this field myself, of course. Does that mean you're studying fingerprints, Mr. Sholmes? <laughs> there are others in that field already, and I abhor the company of inferior minds. No, what I'm researching is skin prints. Skin prints? Oh, a nomenclature of my own design, as is this chemical agent that makes it possible. It instantly reveals objects touched by which, whichever person is under investigation. Brilliant, Mr. Sholmes. As long as it doesn't turn everything completely odorous and black. Oh, I assure you, my dear fellows, you will be witnessing the forensic talents in action very soon indeed. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we should go back to the scene and see if we can uncover any new clues. Oh, that's the spirit, you know. See you later. Yes, until later. I no. love having a sidekick. No, no, Mr. Sholmes, we were thinking you would come with us. Oh, um, <laughs> you were? Yes, oh. of course. You said so just a moment ago. You said we'd witness your forensic talents in action. <laughs> oh, yes, well, I do recall saying something along those lines, yeah. But you go on ahead, yeah. I shall be sure to follow you later. In all likelihood, probably, maybe. Well, I might. <laughs> Your yeah. commitment astounds me. So good at this, yes. Oh, thank you, Mr. Sholmes. We eagerly await your arrival. Bye-bye, oh, <sighs> Reno. Bye, Susie. Well, we're fucked. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right. So like, nah. Um, do we want to go to the hospital? Do we want to go to the scene? Uh, hospital? Hmm. Sure. Let's go see Miss Green. See if she's been discharged. The rat! Hello. Oh. 22nd of February. St. Bartholomew's Hospital. Recovery Ward. What do you suppose is happening? It sounds like some sort of disturbance. Yeah, I hear angry voices. You get away from her. She's so sweet. No, she doesn't need this. Damn. Stay puffed marshmallow statue. <laughs> oh, 
Be not angry, ho oh, ample lady. Verily thou art mistaken. Am I Miss Green? Yes. I think so. Okay. Uh, mistaken my foot. You were looking. You were looking at my painting. And the eye of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. Twas foul indeed and poison that mustached villain giveth to me. Forgive me, lady. I wish that you died from that poison. Ouch. <gasps> oh, oh, God of mercy, apple lady. But thou seest a bigger still. Behold, my Shakespeare dance. This man would have what loved the... to be an idol. Come on, baby, America. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is this? Is he dabbing? This looks rather ominous, doesn't it? <laughs> ominous is a word for it. Oh. Oh, lo, no. tis the lawyer from the land whence risen the sun. How now? Um, what are you doing here, Mr. Shamspeare? Hmm. Mary, I do believe I am returned it onto another ward. He was looking at what he, or he was looking, that's what he's doing. Looking at my terrible work. She is holding that paintbrush like she's about to shove it up his ass. And quite honestly, go girl. You I support that. you. Everyone's newest VTuber, oh, she's Shamspear. <laughs> You're right. Oh, uh, Eastern fellow, so dark and clad. Faith, my work in court this morning was wonderful. I do applaud thee. Oh, well, thank you. Ah, oh, but... Yeah, I thought we were going this direction. That doesn't mean things will go so wonderfully for you tomorrow, does it? Uh... <laughs> Is that supposed to be your neck? I don't, ah. I don't know. Anon! Exeunt! Good day. Oh. Mr. Shamspear might technically be the victim in this case. I feel like we're the victim. But there's definitely a lot more to it than that. It's very hard to pin the man down. Mostly because he moves a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm such an awful person. You have never done anything wrong in your life. Ever. Uh, Miss Green, is everything alright? Oh, yes. I mean, don't worry about me. They're about to discharge me, so I I must be get I must get ready to leave now. Oh, uh, I see. We're delighted that you'll soon be well enough to go home, Miss Green. Oh, dear, you're too kind. I I don't deserve it. You deserve the world. The world. Okay, well, I can't talk to her, but, um... Anything new? She's new. Hello. So, are you feeling more like yourself today, Miss Green? I am, thank you. I mean, people do recover from ordeals like this, don't they? E even people like me. Well, yes. It really was an ordeal, wasn't it? As far as I was concerned, I was just walking along the snow one evening, minding my own business. And then completely out of the blue, I was struck in the back by a knife and collapsed unconscious for days. Of course, when I finally woke up again yesterday, the whole business had been cleared up already. What a terrible week it's been for you. Oh, no. I'm sure I'm very lucky, really. I'll look back on it on this fondly. <laughs> really? Anyway, 
I must be getting my things together, so now I'm right or so I'm ready to be discharged. Oh yes, of course. Sorry to take up your time when you're obviously busy. Ah, this looks like the treatment notes for whoever's occupying this bed. Let's see. Do not permit to run around the hospital. The patient does seem to be it doesn't seem to be here at the moment. He or she is probably running around the hospital then. Oh dear, how worrying. What's worrying is why they haven't discharged the patient yet. The rat's still there. The rat. I love the rat. And I can't look at the painting, so... Okay, well, I have no reason to stick around then, so I guess let's go back to the scene. Just want to roll her on the ground like a ball. <laughs> Alright, 22nd you know, of February. Mr. Natsume's lodgings. Ground floor. Like, in my head, I kind of, like, whenever I see her, she gives me, like, the impression of, like, her voice would be, like, sadness from inside out. <laughs> You know what I mean? See, I see her and I think of the scene in uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, oh my god, yeah. The girl that blows up into a blueberry. Oh. I don't know what it is about her outfit. That's just what it makes me think of. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you. Oh, uh, hello again, Inspector Gregson. Um, what are you doing here? Um, uh, well, we were hoping to have another look around, actually. Mm. The lawyer representing the defendant has a right to examine the scene, as I'm sure you're aware. Oh, uh, yeah. I know this score. Oh, uh, yes, one other thing. The soap on the ledge outside the window, did you find it? With the tea in it? Mm, yeah, we found it all right. And there was a small amount of tea in it, as you said. I knew it! It's with the identification section of the yard now. They're looking into it. The results should be available later today. That's wonderful news. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> Pretty impressive performance in this court this morning. Uh, sorry? No, oh, nothing. Forget it. Just make sure you don't disturb anything in here. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> oh no, he's there. We did invite him. We did indeed invite him. <laughs> Mr. Sholmes? What are you up to over there? Oh. <laughs> What a question indeed! Was it not your good self who asked me to attend the scene? <laughs> Oi! What are you doing here, Sholmes? <laughs> what are you up to over there? What are you doing here? Hmm. Dear me, was a great detective. One always under scrutiny, it seems. Is it now the time, Mr. Sholmes? Are you about to show us your forensic talents in action as you promised? Hmm. With the greatest of pleasure, my dear madam. All right, let's see this forensic magic. Oh boy. Oh my <laughs> god. <little> mess. <laughs> <laughs> this was the correct choice. This um, one, yeah. Hmm. What's all this? <laughs> <laughs> It's role play, my dear fellow. All this is precisely what you requested, Mr. Narihodo. <laughs> Hello, <Hellas> Jones! <laughs> Sensational skin print seeker gun! <laughs> what the fuck is happening? <laughs> I have yeah, no idea what, what this is say, actually supposed to look happened? like. Um... <laughs> <laughs> my next cosplay. <laughs> I, I love this. I need a Goggles replica of this. His regular costume? Yes. So that's okay. This Terminator is better, but... Yeah, it, this is absolutely better. Oh, yeah. 
moment ago, I took a sample from the teacup that was used by the victim. A sample? From Mr. Shamspear's cup? Oh, each individual leaves microscopic secretions on everything he or she touches. A sample of those secretions is all I need to produce this, a refined indicator solution. By liberally spraying the room with this chemical. Everything the victim touched is instantly revealed with the aid of these goggles. So basically we are contaminating the entire scene is what I'm hearing. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Here, try them on! There. Now, spray the chemical indicator about um, all, all and all will be revealed. Spray? H how do I do that exactly? A little press of the X on the area you're interested in is all is required, like this! What, uh, what is that stuff? It's like fog! Yeah, suspension of the chemical indicator is pressurized gas. It's the most efficient way to cover the large area. That was another invention I discovered incidentally whilst I was developing this idea. As you do. Go ahead, try it out, my dear fellow. We may learn something interesting about the victim's movements on the night in question. Well, there's nothing to lose, I suppose. Let's explore. All right, so we are back to Luminol uh, gameplay. <laughs> Yippee! Shoal sprayed his science all over the place. Oh, <laughs> look at this here. We are. We should not ask about what handprints are doing on the floor if we have any. Secretion. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now we know how Juliet won. Oh, <laughs> there, buddy. <laughs> oh yes, interesting. Multitude of the victim's handprints. Why are there so many of them on the floor in this one spot? Oh, Ooh, no. uh, perhaps he had a bad fall just here? Uh-huh. <laughs> There's nothing obvious that would have so uh, he would have tripped over though, is there? Uh, so bad. Mm hmm I wonder. Hmm. Personally, I have to stumble when there's nothing obvious to trip over. I think that's something only a great detective would do, Mr. Jones. Well, this is quite a puzzle. Handprints all over the floor. Yes, there's no obvious explanation. Apparently, none of you have ever gotten freaky, but okay. <laughs> We don't fuck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Apparently not. We don't get. Oh, oh wow. Oh. Or oh, all right. They got very freaky. Uh huh. Well, they were reenacting Romeo and Juliet. They were indeed. <laughs> oh, I. Uh oh. It's everywhere. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, to be fair, this is this guy's home, so you yeah, know, like he should be touching lots yeah. of things. Yeah. It's weird. Oh, glad I decided to spray that twice. Um, it's weird when it will let me spray and when it won't let me spray. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Oh. I'm assuming it's just gonna, like, alert again next time. Like, give us a cutscene if you ever find anything. Oh, there we go. There we go. Look! There are dozens of handprints here! So there are! A great many indeed. So much so that it's hard to make out any of one individual print, in fact. We can't get freaky at Baker Street because Iris needs her nap time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. You're right. Very true. Burr. <laughs> Sounds a chill down my spine. Perhaps he was leaning against the wall <laughs> while he admired this picture? Uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh, totally. <laughs> He's just admiring art. Indeed. Just like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> Unlikely, I would say. It's a rather dull scene after all. And without wishing to state the obvious, you wouldn't generally admire a picture from such a close quarters, I feel. Oh, mm. very true, Mrs. Otto. It's a bit of a mystery, then. Yeah, hmm. Mm. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> no one will I'm ever know what that several is. Several places. <sighs> well, we sprayed Mr. Shelm's amazing skin print indicator all over the room, didn't we? Oh, that must have been me. <laughs> oh. We did, but there are two places in particular that are of interest, I would say. The handprints on the floor there. And on the wall, by the picture, you mean? Yes. Yes, and I think the floor warrants closer investigation. I won't be a moment. If you see okay. anything white, don't touch it. <laughs> oh my god. No! I was just thinking, I want to see if we can take the painting off the wall. Yeah, I know. I don't know why only the floor warrants investigation. Yeah, I'm less interested in the floor now. Um, ah! <laughs> what is it, Mrs. Otto? Look here, Mr. Naruhoto. One of the floorboards has just popped out. So they got real freaky. One of the... Mm. <sighs> you mean, it's a secret hiding place? Excellent work, Miss Usato. So, what do we have in here? Oi! What are you all doing? Inspector Gregson! Stand aside right this minute! It's my job to investigate there! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no need, Inspector. You continue to dig into your portion of chips whilst we dig around under the floor here. You fancy talk spotting me on my food anyway, Sholmes! New bit of evidence is exactly what I need. Wow. A secret hiding place under the floor. What a find. It's not a hiding place you make use of in Japan. I don't think I could lift a straw to uh, yep, a that's Tommy on me. mat. No, I know. But I never expected one of these wooden floorboards to move either. It's got me wondering about the wall over there, too. Aren't you curious? Oh. I'll investigate it once. There she goes. I love her little standing on the box. Hmm. <laughs> Real. There's nothing behind the picture. Damn it. Sadly. <laughs> Only the wall. Hmm. How disappointing. But then, how do you explain the handprints? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Back to our original theory. We know! Uh, I really can't think of why anyone would have been touching the wall over and over <laughs> in one place like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you are. A print for you. Alright, we got a photograph of the handprints on the wall. Why do I feel like he just gave us porn? <laughs> oh, thank you very much. His invention can make prints, too? Now then, I wonder if Inspector Gregson's found anything under the floor there. Oh, I'm desperate to know. So am I. Okay, well, um, then I guess let's talk to him. That might be a novel idea. I'd love to know if there's anything hidden underneath the floorboard there. Allow me to exit Gregson now. After all, we were acquainted. Yeah, you guys seem like besties. <laughs> Inspector Gregson, really, it's been too long. <laughs> what is it, Sherms? Oh, I thought perhaps you might show me what you found there, seeing as we're such good friends. We're not friends. Mm. No way. I suppose not. Aww. 
<laughs> Guys, he said he's not my friend. Yeah. It's a dismal failure. Oh. Yes, I heard. Ugh, I'd kill to know what was under that floorboard. Am I your friend? All right then. Fast, fast. What? <sighs> You did discover the hiding place after all. Oh my god, we are friends. Thank you. I suppose I should at least fill you in. R really, Inspector? Thank you! Just not that weird over there. Yeah, make him go <laughs> away. <laughs> Do it quickly, my dear fellow. If there's one thing I know about this man, is that he blows with the wind. A fickle as weather. Hey, stop making me out to be some kind of nut. We've met. We already know you are. There were three items under the floor there. A newspaper clipping, a photographic print, and a tin box. Now, what do you want to know? About all of them. Okay, uh, let's ask about the newspaper clipping first. Well, looks like this was cut off the paper about three months ago. It's about a convict who got sick and died while he was serving time up in Manchester. How terrible. I made it made the headlines down here in London as well. Bloke had been sentenced to death, you see. But nature got him first. Oh my goodness. He'd committed a capital offense? Man by the name of Selden. Nasty piece of work. Want to burglary is a murder. They say he hoard the they say the hoard he knocked off was worth about a thousand pounds. A hoard? Of treasure, you mean? A jewelry and the like. But he did in it somewhere, and no one knows where. And now he's dead. Papers loved it, of course. A thousand pounds lost on route to hell. Uh, some such as the headline, I don't know. Oh, does it not strike you, though? Why such an article would be so carefully enforced under the floor? Nah. Nah. I suppose now that you mention it, it does seem a bit odd. Perhaps I'll go over the paperwork we've got on Selden back in the yard and see if I can turn anything up. Alright. How about the photographic print? Look at this photograph. Every time I look, it makes me laugh. Anyway, so, this is the photograph I found. Looks reasonably reason to me. Oh, yes! It would appear to have been taken on the street in front of the house there. Uh, and the gentleman on the left is Mr. Garadeb, the landlord, of course. But who's the young man on the right? Mr. Garadeb's son, perhaps? Uh, perhaps. You can take that print if you like. Really? Are you sure? <sighs> we can presume, then. Therefore, that the Yard already knows. The identity of the young man, that is. Uh, is that true? Probably, Shamspear. Hmm, <laughs> well... It's too bad if we do. Fortunately for you lot, leaking information isn't one of my pastimes. Boo. My <laughs> dear inspector, if I may be so bold as to point something out. Pastimes are for one's leisure, but this is for work. Shams, maybe this is why he doesn't like you. Have you ever considered that? <laughs> Actually, yes, I have considered that, yes. All the more reason I'm not telling you. Oh, dismal failure. Yes, I heard. Is this his version of an epic fail? Yes. <laughs> I wonder why a photograph like this was hidden under the floor. I mean, Mr. Shamspear himself isn't in it. Photographic prints are still red treasures in the East End. I imagine Mr. Gerardip was rather in life. I delighted to have been immortalized. He probably made a proud present of it. Alright, what's in the box? It's a dick in a box. 
<laughs> I hope not. <laughs> no, this is tin box looks interesting, doesn't it? Might I suggest, Inspector, that you open it? Hmm? If you were to find something inside that reveals the truth behind the case, I wouldn't be the least surprised. Here, funnily enough, I've already had a look. It's completely empty. Souls, what? Shamspear, give us a clue, man! <laughs> you didn't even have the chance to utter a word, Mr. Naruto. <laughs> nah. Too late. Uh, but anyway, at least we found out what's inside the box. Yes, thin air. It's empty, rather like how I feel inside. <laughs> Whoa there, that got too real. Uh, too real, bro. Is there too nothing real. more to this box, then? I wonder. Too real, bro. <laughs> wow! Waka hi! Hi, ah! honey! The kitty! Ooh! I love kitties! Ooh! Look at it go! Ah. Oh, look! It's that lovely little kitty cat! What was its name? It's Mr. Natsume's, isn't it? I don't think we ever asked him, actually. Why don't we call it, um, Wogahai? You know, like Mr. Natsume refers to himself in Japanese. I wonder how we got in here. Clever cat. Oh, wonderful. Well then, Wogahai, mm -hmm. there's something deli uh, delicious I brought for you from the cat's meat. From the cat's meat man? Yeah. Special vendor, apparently. Meow. Baby. Oh, you get it. I still cat so meat. Cute. Me for cat. Sorry. <laughs> A W in the chat for cats. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Hee <laughs> <laughs> hee. He couldn't be happier now. Look. I just hope we can bring some happiness to his owner, too. I mean, we we can mm. try bringing him. Yeah. <gasps> Look at him! He's making little biscuits! Oh, he's making biscuits! He's oh. busy in the factory. I love him. Hi! Ah. Hello! I love cats. Oh my god, it's a meow! <laughs> that was a cheeky little meow, Agahai. I love it. Oh, but he's so adorable. Uh, I could sit and watch him forever. Same. I think he may not appreciate that after a while. And we have an investigation to get back to. Nah. Nah. Cat. Cat time. Cat time. <laughs> always cat time. It's always cat time, yeah. If you ran out of change, you wouldn't even have any light, let alone heat. For the needy, London's winters can be very harsh. That's true, but if you think about it... Even the wealthy would find themselves freezing if they ran out of small change. London's winters can be very harsh for the forgetful, too, then. Frankly, I'm starting to wonder if Suzato-san and I are going to make it to the spring. I have frozen to death while she's been gone, apparently. <laughs> That's true. We don't even have a meter at Baker Street, let alone a gas stove. Look how dark the stain on the floor is underneath the meter there. Yes, from all the water dripping out after the ice coins melted, as you established in this court in the court this morning. It's a very large and obvious stain, isn't it? Uh, Mr. Shams to beer oh, must have used an awful lot of ice coins, I suppose. It was an ingenious idea, I'll give him that. He really said tax fraud. He did. Immediately. <laughs> ah, the ill-fated teacups from which the two men drank on the ill-fated night. During their heated literary debate, yes. Who's stronger, Romeo or Juliet? 
sounds like it was quite a um, discussion. <laughs> yeah. Discussion. Mm -hmm. Now I think of it, I'm sure that the two lovers in the play ended their lives with poison. That's fiction, Mrs. Otto. Let's hope it stays that way. Mm -hmm. Was he going method actor and yeah. poison in its own teeth? Okay. Uh, so it turns out that Mr. Shamspear wasn't eating the soap at all. That's right. The mystery of why he had it on a plate whilst holding a fork in his hand is solved. Uh, yes, to prize his latest ice, pri yeah, to prize mm -hmm. his latest ice coin out of the mold. And in the process, he accidentally broke the bar of soap in two. It certainly was hard to imagine, let alone deduce. The sun never shines in this room, thanks to that depressing brooked-up window. Yet, with enough determination, you can always remove the bricks to set up some soap outside, can't you? That sounds like a very wise life lesson, Mrs. Suzato. <laughs> Only if you plan to follow a life of crime, Mr. Narahodo. Fair. <laughs> I mean, Shamspear really did say be gay drew crimes, so... Yeah? <laughs> Okay, well, I don't see anything else here. So let's get out of here. Alright, let's check out Briar Road. Anything out here? It's 22nd of February. Briar Road. The old Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> With the exception of the top floor, where Mr. and Mrs. Garridub live, all the windows are bricked up. Yes, that's because of an old window tax that was charged on the number of windows a property had. In order to pay less tax, the poor members of society f uh, filled in many of their windows. But the tax has since been abolished, hasn't it? So the windows could all be opened, again, opened up again, surely. Unfortunately, it would appear that the residents of this district can't afford to pay... Um, to have that work done. Yes, that is a sad state of affairs. Especially for people like poor Mr. Natsume, who have to live all cooped up in a windowless room. I suppose that's the price you pay for living in very cheap accommodation. You saying it's his fault? <laughs> that people are stupid. Mm. <laughs> um... It all seems rather pointless when you put it like that. I mean, as a reminder, uh, Natsume lives in this so that he can buy more books. So... Oh, yeah. Alright. Well, let's go visit the worst person I've ever known. 22nd of February, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Garadib's room. Real. You're in luck. Mr. Garadib appears to be out. Yay. Hmm. Oh well, I suppose we'll just have to come back again later. <laughs> Go through with stuff. Dodge that bullet. Dodge that cannon. Twenty <laughs> second of February, <laughs> local prison, <laughs> cell nine. Bless you. Bless you. Thanks. Oh, Mr. Natsume's back. So he is. Mr. Natsume, hello? When he disappeared, I was like, that's very oh, ominous. I'm a cat. Sorry. Meow. I don't know who Mr. Natsume is or her lock shows. I don't know about courts or trials or old Bailey. I'm a cat. That's what I am. Just I, a cat. <laughs> I looked away when you said that the first time, and I was like, oh, Mana's just saying something to be funny. I didn't think. No. <laughs> that was actually the line until I read it again. <laughs> I was like, oh, Mana's just being silly. No. No. 
This is canon. <laughs> Mr. Saucy Nutsmeg has uh, <laughs> lost it. Become a cat. <laughs> Mr. Hero, he's trying to escape from reality. Trying to? He already has, completely. He's gone. gone. So, um, what's your name, then? (laughs) As yet, I have no name. I'm a cat, and I have no (laughs) such use for such things. (laughs) Mr. Naruhodo, he hasn't fully thought this one, thought, <laughs> thought out his new identity yet. Maybe it's not too late to bring him back to reality. Girl, let him dream. Do you think <laughs> let him be cat. You could open your eyes for us, Mr. Natsume. Mm. No. No. <laughs> no. No. I am not a cat. (laughs) It worked. He's back to the real world. He's now (laughs) just like sobbing heavily, but you know. (laughs) What is going to become of me? No! Don't answer that. It's obvious. Uh, my accursed soul is never gonna escape this accursed fate. Mr. Natsume, no. This morning's proceedings in court prove that there's hope. Yeah. Is there? Yes, yeah. yes. Welcome, student Mr. Narihoto Esquire was brilliant, but, 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 but. The reverse is omnipresent in court and in my logic. Here, there, everywhere. What's he looking straight at me for? Look into your soul. I think that perhaps there are some things we should discuss. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, we must. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm sure this is going to be a perfectly normal conversation. Yep. In my whole life, have I ever been so, so moved as I was today? No. Of course, if I cast my mind back, there were perhaps one or two other occasions that moved me more. Hmm. But if I just block those out, then today being that courtroom was... was <laughs> it was the most moving experience of my life, welcome to the Mr. Naruto Esquire. You're too kind. Scotland Yard found the remaining tea, just as we deduced and are analyzing it as we speak. There's nothing wrong with that tea. They won't find a drop of poison in it. That's a... Solum, Swan, Soseki, Certainty. Uh-huh. Tell me, did you both drink the tea at the same time that night? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Most definitely. Remember, drink tea while it's hot. We both poured it down our throats like it was a hot bath for our bellies. <laughs> And at the time, you were both completely fine. As shown by the fact that he and Mr. Shamspear then engaged in the, um, <laughs> Romeo and Juliet <laughs> match. Oh yeah, that's how we're calling it. I suppose the focus of tomorrow's proceedings will be how the poison was taken by the victim then. Yeah, that's what the kids are calling it now. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix and chill. Yeah. That rotten Shamspear! What have I ever done to him? You don't recall him taking issue with you over anything you've done recently? Hmm. I've been holed up in my room, immersed in books. I don't recall anything. Anything at all! Right. But what I don't understand is why he didn't let me know sooner. But you know, what, Mr. Natsume? About the soap, of course. What else? Oh, dear. (laughs) Are you struggling with such a meager stipend? Nuts making chill. (laughs) I hate that. Of course I am. If I had money, I wouldn't have chosen to live an accursed existence in such a cursed lodging. Oh, yes. You said it's because the place is cursed that it's so cheap, didn't you? Exactly. Especially the room I rent. 
The spirit of the capital offender who lived there is still haunts the place and is trying to kill me. Capital <laughs> offender. Might I ask Locum Suda, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire, that next time you visit me, you bring scores of super soft soaps. <laughs> sure. Okay, well, that was helpful. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Someone is having a breakdown. Yeah. He thinks he's a cat. Okay, well. Here, would you like a bar of soap? He's just going through his warrior cat phase. Yep. <laughs> warrior cat. Uh, Mr. Natsume, what do you know about this? Oh, there it is. That lathery lowlife that took my neighbor's life and sent me sliding in the depths of despair. Slippery, <laughs> sickly, psychotic, saboteur. You've really gone off soap, haven't you? Hmm, absolutely. And I've made up my mind. The next time someone gives me soap as a present, it's... Friendship finished firmly forever. I'm never washing my hands ever again. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what we can, or that we can blame soap for everything that's happened, Mr. Natsume. Don't become a sweaty gamer, Mr. Natsume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Mr. Natsume, it's nothing much, but... Yo, know, it's been too long since I've been offered a present with the delightfully humble etiquette of our homeland. What? You're too kind. I accept it gladly. Uh, sorry, but I wasn't trying to give it to you, actually. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> shit. Uh. <laughs> well, this is awkward. Just kidding. I totally knew that you weren't trying to give it to me. Yeah. I wonder if he knows anything Jeff. about the handprints on the wall. Nope, yeah. he does not. Oh, so he doesn't want to tell us how Romeo... Uh, I mean, Juliet was pegging Romeo. <laughs> yeah, apparently not. Oh. What's this? It's a newspaper cutting that we found in Mr. Shamespeare's room. Oh. Oh. So he knew, did he? Sorry? About this man. Selden. A convicted killer. And the evil spirit behind the curse that afflicts my lodgings. What? He's already taken one young man's life, and now he's trying to take the life of another. A miserable mustache, much maligned Japanese man. Mr. Natsume, if you know something, please, you must tell us. Tell us everything oh. you can about this evil spirit. All right. Let's Thank find you. out some more. The truth is, I didn't know the details myself until very recently. That Selden man was arrested about a year ago, and at the time he was hiding out in lodgings, Mr. Garadip's house. What? He lived where you do now? Oh, that's right. Yes, exactly where I live now. In my very room. Oh my. Your room was previously occupied by a criminal found guilty of a capital offense? But before his sentence could be carried out, he died in prison. That was three months ago. And that's when it started. The g g g g ghost. The g g ghost. <laughs> g g g ghost. What really is? What really is this curse you keep mentioning, Mister Natsume? It's already caused one death. A few months after the criminal passed away in prison, a man died in the room. The man who rented it after Selden, in fact. Mm -hmm. The poor lodger. He, he was found dead, dead in a mysterious circumstances. The room was locked from the inside. Locked from the inside? Exactly like the case we're dealing with now. So that's the convict's curse, is it? Mm-hmm. Yes, well, th that was the start of it. Do you have any idea how the lodger before you passed away, Mr. Natsume? Hmm. The official cause of death was asphyxia. Huh? When they discovered the body, the room was full of gas. Gas? 
I only found out, out after I signed the lease. When Mr. Garrett came to tell me later, he he couldn't stop myself to, from trembling. In fact, if I'd known beforehand, I'd probably have been too scared to take the room. Landlord's lease, luckily, legal. Lucky for Mr. Garadeb, maybe. But not so lucky for poor Mr. Natsume. And now you believe this curse is affecting you? Mm, it is, it is. At first, I just felt as though I was being watched all the time. And then you talked about having nightmares, didn't you? The, 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 the dead are just trying to... To take me with them, they can kill for me, and they try to, to, to suffocate me. So just, just when I'm struggling to breathe, I, I wake up, and the room is as cold as ice. But why is your room so cold? Mm -hmm. London's there's... winters are too cold to bear without any he heating overnight. But for some reason, even though I light the stove before I climb into bed at night. The pilot light always goes out and the room fills with gas. But but that's terrible. That's exactly the same situation as what, what led to the previous occupant's death. And then there's what happened to Mr. Shamespeare last night, when he was mysteriously poisoned. There's clearly more to that incident than can be explained by a curse, though. Whatever can be the cause of all these strange happenings in Mr. Garadeb's rooms? Gas leak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gas leak. It all comes back to the gas company. Mm -hmm. I'm conspiracy braining over here. Exactly. <laughs> all right, let's go ask the landlord. 22nd of February, Mr. and Mrs. Garadeb's room. We're just Mr. Garadeb for now. Yeah. Uh, say isn't she in jail? You're here now, Mr. Garadab. Yes, this is my abode, isn't it? No. Um, right, volley business it is for me, you know, getting out and about. Were you at the Old Bailey by any chance? The what? <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of such a thing. No, um... Uh, naturally, fate on my lodgings hanging in the balance and all that. Uh, not a trial to miss. The fate of what's already been dubbed your haunted lodgings, yes. Of course, the place has caused quite a stir around the capital more than one uh, occasion already. As the old haunted lodgings or some such. Uh, well, at least he knows. Makes you wonder what the blazes is going on, don't you know? Is Sholm's with us? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it does. In fact, thinking back to Mr. Natsume's other trial just two days ago, you were at the Old Bailey as then as well, weren't you? Testifying with your wife about what happened? Yes, I'm sure he'd like to forget that one. Uh, stopped off at the prison on the way home, in fact. Beastly business. I see. So, what brings you to my haunted abode today? Your lodgings! Some fishy fellow from the... Oh, boy. Some fishy fellow from the Far East and a failed actor chap of questionable character, eh? Yes, the house does seem to have become something of a magnet for rum fellows of late. Thanks to that Bali curse. The Convex curse, you mean? Ah, uh, I heard, heard the stories, have you? Rotten Scoundrel was arrested here, then the chap, next chap in the room goes uh, and keels over. Then there was that woman who dropped dead just outside on the street, not to mention the actor yesterday. Have you ever considered that maybe you should just stop being a landlord? Am I next, eh? <laughs> oh, one can only hope. <laughs> well, 
I can't help but get the golly wobbles, can you? Oh, mm. uh, when you say the woman who dropped dead outside on the street, do you mean Miss Green? Because Miss Green, who was stabbed by the knife, and Mr. Shamspear, who was poisoned last night, are both very much alive still. Yes, well, so it is that blasted convict's curse, it seems. Personally, I should be quite content with such lodgings. Sir, we've seen your home. You would not. <laughs> a bath, a toilet, fireplace, a fascinating history. Why, it sounds like a lap of luxury. Hmm, I'm not so sure about that. Well, there's no bath or toilet included, and no fireplace either. But wow. you do look out for your tenants, don't you? By watching the rise and fall of the flames in your gas lamps up here. Yes, never hurts to keep an eye on things. Uh, in case there are any mishaps or such like. I think you've had a mishap already, sir! <laughs> That's not helpful, Mr. Sholmes. It is in my will. Heavens forgive me. The words just came to my lips. Alright, how about your lodgers? Thank you, chat, for letting me know that, by the way. It is now changed. Yeah, some fishy... We said this already. Yep. There's no need for that, Mr. Garadeb. Uh, that's right, Mr. Natsume. There's no way fishy. There is no way in, in no way hmm. fishy. There we go. He is undeniably peculiar. However, is it, it is right. Is it oh, right he that he took the vacancy immediately after the previous tenant passed away? Yes, that's right. I asked the estate agent to find someone and he popped up the very same day. Uh, never come across a chap so keen for a place with a background, as it were. I don't think it was the room's background he was keen on so much as the cheap rent, actually. So, how long has Mr. Shamspear been lodging under your roof? Uh, that failed actor chap? Let me see. Oh, uh, of course. Yes, it's been three months now. Quite sure of it. Only three months? He's quite new here, too, then. Who? Oh, and to what do I owe the certainty in that regard, Mr. Garadeb, if I might ask? Well, it's that Selden scoundrel, as it happens. Selden? The, com the convict, you mean? Do Selden and Shamspear have some sort of connection, then? Alright. I hope your Wi-Fi gets better. Mm. Yeah. Um, that con convict chap, Selden, passed away in the clink three months ago now, you see? Some m malady or other. Or other. I almost yes. read that as m'lady. M'lady. <laughs> m'lady. <laughs> <was like>, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, we've seen the report from the newspaper at the time. Well, it was only three days later that the tragedy... Tra tradition showed his face, the actor fellow. Really? Uh, yes, I remember quite distinctly. Ah, oh, tis small, this world we inhabit. Prithee, landlord, hear my request. I, the humble Shamspear, do desire to take thy room on the middle floor of an airwell for rent. Middle floor? Hmm. <laughs> Terribly sorry and whatnot, but that won't be possible. 
already have a lodger on the middle floor. Ground floor room's vacant, though. Oh, nothing can be made out of nothing. Let me repeat mine, Will, unto thee. Those curls must be muffling your ears. The room on the middle floor is taken. It's ground floor or nothing. I wonder... Mm. So... The guy uh -huh. that died, that was originally living in the middle room. Mm -hmm. Who might actually just be Shamspear. Well, yes, but he had a stash of treasure. <gasps> oh. So is that why he wants the middle room? And that's why all these people keep dying because he keeps killing them off so to try to get to the middle room. room. <gasps> but the middle mm -hmm. room keeps getting filled before he can get in there. Mm hmm. Maybe. Galaxy brain. Oh, that... I've connected Unless the dots. He did make a tunnel <laughs> under the floor <laughs> with the floorboards. I mean, you'd have Very... to climb up the walls. That's true. Yeah. Very well. We have an accord. Yeah. Ah, Shamspear dance to celebrate. That's weird. <laughs> Um, from what I heard in court today, sounds like the chap was thieving gas. And he was three months in arrears with the rent, too. So that he'd never paid rent, then. No. No. <laughs> As a fellow with a poly player, all right. Hmm. Thank you for your candor, Mr. Garadeb. We are most grateful. By way of appreciation, allow me to say one or two words. Give me my robe. Put on my crown. I have immortal lodgings in me. Okay. What was with the cat pawing? What's happened to you? Dear Shakespeare, my dear fellow, one of his most famous lines. I wish to divulge my own learning of the subject, for I... I've turned for literature, too, you know. Perhaps you could turn your attention to more apt lines, then? To be or not to be, that is the question, my dear fellow. Mr. Gerdeb, could I ask you to look at this photograph? Every time I do, it makes me laugh. Is that your son who's with you there? No, no, not at all. He was a lodger here once. Duncan Ross was his name. Duncan, Duncan Ross. A street uh, photographer happened to be passing, so I asked him to take a shot. Just for kicks, really. Was he by any chance a lodger before Mr. Natsume? Yes, that's right. Ah, the young gentleman who died in the room in mysterious circumstances. Just what Mr. Mustache was waiting for, one might say. Yes, young Duncan lived in the room at the top of the first flight of stairs before the ja that Japanese chap. Would you mind telling us a little more about him? Yes, Duncan Ross. Young chap was attending art school and had to work for it, mind. Moved into the middle floor room about a year ago after that criminal, Selden, was arrested. I'm glad Conan Doyle and I were on the same page on this. <laughs> I got hey. this. Mm. Uh, young students are always on the hunt for rooms with a history behind them. A history of cheap rent, maybe. Yes. Yes. Well, anyway, it was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the oh. I was talking. <laughs> Hadn't quite worked out the old trick of watching the gas lamps to see what my lodgers were up to at the time. So sadly, I was rather tardy to discover what had happened. Smell of gas that. Smell gas 
that alerted me it was. Oh, yes. Synonymous with the smell of death. Called the police straight away, of course, and the officer kicked in the door, kicked the door off its hinges. But once we got inside, we all bawly collapsed. Because of the gas? Yes, room was full of it. No air at all. Stove must have gone out while the poor chap was sleeping in his bed. So Mr. Ross suffocated to death. Of course, the police gave me a sound ticking off because the gas pipes were so old and all that. I can't tell you how much it set me back to have the lot replaced all over the house. Well, my dude. Like, otherwise you were going to kill someone else, so... Mm -hmm. But even after you had all that work done, Mr. Natsume says the same thing. That the stove goes out at night whilst he's asleep in bed. Well, that's the Bali curse. The convict's curse. I've done my duty as landlord now. Someone's feeling defensive. Ah, that reminds me, actually. Yes? About young Duncan. The night before the poor chap perished, he'd been writing a letter. A letter of affection to a young lady. <laughs> Oh, damn. A love letter, you mean? It's a telenovela. Juicy. I know. Yes, where did I put it now? Ah, here it is. Left it on my desk. Why do you have this? <laughs> what K-drama shit is this? I You're love really... it. If you'll excuse me, let me see now. What does it say? Ooh. To my most beautiful and charming sweetheart. Um, do you think that we should be reading such a personal piece of correspondence? Yes. My dear Give Miss Misato, that is precisely why I prefaced my reading with, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> you such a I will not excuse you, Mr. Sholmes, no. Damn. Uh, sadly, he didn't address it, though. So, I have no means of delivering the thing. Rather sad, really. I see. Oh, that's gonna play on my mind. But, really, the identity of Mr. Ross's sweetheart has no bearing on the case. How do you know that? Mm -hmm. we, you, we all know it's going to. Um, really. She doesn't, but you yeah. know what I mean. Um... <laughs> I think we should leave well alone. I don't think so. Yes, I suppose you're right. You know what, Mr. Sholmes, okay. you can give it to me. I'll just keep it in my pocket. Oh, great. Indeed, the intended recipient's address is missing. However, there is a name attributed to the man's most beautiful and charming sweetheart. Mr. Sholmes, please. I've already had to ch chastise you about this once. She's gonna hmm. fucking kill him. Yep. My undying love to you, my colorful darling, Olive Green. So sad to chat. Take down. Yeah, really. <laughs> ah. Uh, Olive Green, the woman who was plunged into a coma after a knife plunged into her back outside this house five days ago. The victim of the last case Sosek Sam was in court for, who regained consciousness only yesterday. Is it just chance that her name has come up now? Or could it could it possibly be a mere coincidence? Mr. Naruhoto, whatever could, can this mean? Why are you asking me? I have no brain cells. Hmm. Reading personal correspondence can have its merits, you see, Mr. Sato. No! Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm with him. We need the tea. It might be against the law. 
Lol, chat but, uh... is like, what? <laughs> Alright. So, Olive Green had a secret admirer. So, but let's now go he's talk to dead. her. Yeah. Let's go deliver oh. her letter. Well, she's still here. 22nd of February, St. Bartholomew's Hospital, recovery ward. Mr. Narahoto, I've just finished speaking with the doctor. It seems Miss Green is well enough to be discharged at last. This is good news. But hopefully, just before she leaves... Oh, God. Ah. What is it? Miss Green! Oh, girl? What that? She clearly just hid something behind her back. Because it's none of our business. It, it is, but you know. It, I want to know. What, one moment. I'll be with you in a jiffy. I'm a nosy bitch. Oh, hello, everyone. What are you all doing here? Uh, the doctor said I could be discharged, so I'm just getting my things together. Miss Green, what are you, you just do? What were you just doing? Oh, um, <laughs> nothing really. Nothing. Uh, fucking business. I was just about to take some medicine the doctor prescribed me. Uh, that's all. Well, we were hoping to have another quick chat with you, if that's all right. I don't really have anything else to tell you. All right, she's definitely behaving strangely. Let's see if we can't coax something out of her. It's wonderful news that you're going to be discharged, Miss Green. Oh, yes. I mean, thank you. Once people are better, the hospital staff don't want them lingering and wasting space. Not people like me, anyway. Oh my god, girl. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't think I should keep anyone waiting. I probably shouldn't stand around and chat. She certainly doesn't seem to be in the mood to talk, that's for sure. Hey, do you want a love letter? Did we this not take so it? See, I got a bag of popcorn. We didn't <laughs> take the letter. Oh, <gasps> that's fucked up. No, bro, I Here. wanted to see this. Look at him, Miss Green. We were hoping to ask you about someone, Mr. Duncan Ross. You knew him, didn't you? Oh, 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 and she's dead. Um, poison? Yeah. What was she drinking? Oh no, I'm so sorry. The bottle of medicine fell down when she did. Oh, Miss Green, are you alright? We're too late. Sholm's already ate the letter. Of course he did. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to startle you like that. No, no. It's alright. I just wasn't expecting it. But how do you know about Duncan? Mr. Ross has been writing a letter, er, had been writing a letter when he passed away. The landlord found it in his room. It was a very personal letter t to you. I, it was at the art school. That's where I met Duncan. A year ago now. He was working to fund his studies. He dreamt of becoming a professional artist one day. And the two of you became romantically involved? Yes, that's right. We were very much in love. We were engaged to be married, oh. actually. That's oh, why he no. decided to move into a cheaper room to save money for a wedding. Mm. And that's what led him to Mr. Garadab's. 
Yes, he told me he found the worst but cheapest room in the entire East End. And then, one month ago, that's when it happened. We're so terribly sorry, Miss Green. Well, it's all in the past now, I suppose. Poor Miss Green, she looks desperately sad. I was starting to think that's just her look. <laughs> but now I see that she has every reason to feel the universe is against her. Poor thing. Baby girl. Um, I do hope you won't think I'm being rude, but... Girl, I think the rat is drinking your, your uh, medicine. <laughs> Would you mind leaving me in peace now? I have to leave the hospital soon. Oh, I'm so sorry. We didn't mean to hold you up. Of course, we'll be on our way. Mr. Naruhodo. Oh. 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 <laughs> Mr. Naruhodo. The rat is dead! <gasps> well, surely you were not about to leave. That's quite out of the question. How do I... Nope, that's not it. Can I hide? Uh... What? Mr. Sholmes? I didn't realize you were here. See? You can only yep. see it. But the rat is dead! She was about to drink poison. I knew it. I knew it. She looked like she was doing something crazy. But of course I was, my dear fellow. Watching intently from the shadows as always. Well, make your presence known next time. Mr. Shelms, what, what's this about? Something which occurs to me with some regularly. My Mitsutato is this. Why do detectives insist on such ex post facto modus operandi? Why solve a case after it's happened? Instead of preventing a case before it happens, that is what sets a great detective apart. What do you mean? There is a case waiting to happen under our very noses, Mr. Narihodo. There's already been one. A rat is dead. So, let us avert disaster. Let us prevent this case from ever happening with nothing but careful observation. All right. All the clues you need are set before you. You need only look and you cannot fail to see. You can do it, Mr. Naruhoto. I know you can. Well, the rat is dead. My rat! The poor thing. That mouse seems to be dead. Look. I didn't notice it there before, did you? I think perhaps it drank the medicine that spilled out of the bottle. But that's... that's the bottle that Miss Green was about to drink from when we arrived. You... you don't think... Ah, I see you've come to appreciate the true nature of the scene. That's of a tragedy about to take place. Yes, I... I think it's falling into place. Miss Green, the contents of the bottle you had before has spilt out onto the floor. And the poor mouse that drank it has sadly died. Hmm. Ah. I think it's clear that the bottle must have contained a powerful poison. Imagine poisoning yourself to death in the hospital. Yeah. That's the worst. Don't worry, I will attend to the mouse presently. Be kind to him. Mm. Make sure you sing him a song when you lower him into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Opa Gundam style. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Green, were you intending to go the same way as the rodent? To take your own life? Once we'd left, you would have put it to your lips again, wouldn't you? And taken the poison? 
I... I... Miss Green, please. Please talk to us. Stop falling backwards. <laughs> It definitely feels as though this card must be relevant. I mean, when we first arrived, Miss Green was standing with it in her hand in what can only be described as a very tense atmosphere. Yes. It may very well be related to whatever incident Mr. Sholmes believes is about to happen here. Perhaps we should ask Miss Green about it. All right, let's ask Miss Greeny about Green. Uh, Miss Green. All right. Ten seconds later, and we do, would have arrived at a very different scene here. In all probability, we would not have enjoyed the most delightful conversation. Of course, perhaps it has been quite so delightful from your perspective, Miss Green. Poor girl. Actually, in, in a way, now that everything's out in the open, I feel like a weight has been lifted. Tell me. That's why it's important to talk to people. Mm -hmm. How did you acquire that medicine? Well, with this being a hospital at all, when the doctor comes to examine me in the mornings, he always leaves the medicine cabinet open for a while. So I snuck this out when he wasn't looking. Hmm. It conspicuously lacks a label. I wonder what it contains. I'm afraid I don't really know. But I thought if I drank it, it might just stop the pain somehow. Oh, Sato. No. Oh, please, Miss, please, Miss Green, don't talk of such things. Well, it seems clear now that it contains poison. Why is there poison in the medicine cabinet? Yeah, what the fuck? What kind of hospital is this? Yeah. Yes, that poor little mouse is proof of that. Oh no, it's all my fault. What have I done? I shall remove this to my office, Miss Green. I take it you have no objection? I don't know that he should have a powerful poison either, but... <laughs> no, none. <laughs> uh, no. That's too scary for him. He's about to take it home where he has a ten-year-old. No! Oh! Look at the... the, uh, rip and that envelope. Mm. <gasps> we have the other mm. torn-off end! That we oh found in Mr. Shamspear's room. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> neither the sender's name or address appeared to be written on the envelope of the card or the card. It arrived by post at my home the day before the incident that put me in the hospital here. I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Road at 5 p.m. on the 17th. Don't tell anybody else about this letter or the meeting. It is a matter of utmost importance. Hmm. Wait a minute. The 17th? Of this month? That's the day... That's the day you were stabbed on Briar Road! And 5 p.m. It's precisely the time when the incident occurred. A slog and salad, yes. A pub on the northern corner of Briar Road. Briar Road? Being the street that Mr. Gerdiv's house is on. Does this mean that... Yes, I'm sure... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure you've guessed. That day when I was struck in the back by the knife. It was actually... I was actually on my way to the slug, slug and salad. I love that name for a pub. Mm. Goodness. 
So that's what you were doing on Briar Road that day. I I'm sorry I didn't say anything before. I think I really will have to ask you to excuse me now. I told you everything. Yes. I'm very sorry to have had to drag up such painful memories for you. No, it's fine. Miss Green. Please promise us you won't try to do anything like that again. Yes, don't worry. Your detective friend has the bottle now anyway. And besides... I've been stabbed in the back and had a close shave with a bottle of poison and I'm still here. I think I'm destined to see things through to the end. <laughs> no. It might sound a little conceited, but well, that's how all of this has made me feel. Not conceited She's so at all. sweet. She's she so is. sweet. Leaving Miss Green and St. Bartholomew's behind, we made our way back to Baker Street with Mr. Sholmes. Well, it would appear we've reached the end of the investigation trial for net today, anyway. Yes, it's late. And Mr. Narihodo, did you discover anything that may be of use to you in the court tomorrow, do you think? Details about Mr. Shamspear, Mr. Garadeb's lodgings, the convict, Selvin, Selvin. There are many facets to this case, and we're yet to see the heart of it, if you ask me. That's my feeling, anyway. I can't help but help wondering about the results of the analysis. Into Mr. Natsume's tea, you mean? Yes. Well, they have found, uh, Stirachine? Strike nine. Strike okay. nine, thank you. In it or not. Well, I fear that either way. It would be hard to escape the grip of our friend, Mr. Reaper. Thanks. Oh, dear. <laughs> yes. You fucked. Merrick Von Zeeks. <laughs> But I wish you every success, of course, and though I was late to rise this morning. Tomorrow will be a new dawn. I intend to spring from my bed at a crisp hour and attend the trial. Mr. Sholmes, you're going to come? Indeed. Whatever happens, I shall be there, assuming my eyelids cooperate in the morning. Yes. That is such a mood. Me, yes. Well... I think we've done all we can. All that's left is to remain focused and keep fighting for Mr. Natsume's cause until the very end. I can't believe he looks more of a hoe now. <laughs> <laughs> London, the world's most prosperous city, home to some six million people. But away from the razzle-dazzle, down back alleys, behind bricked up windows, the lonely lurk. Soseki-san had battled long and hard with loneliness during his many months here. And so I felt honor-bound to battle equally hard for my compatriot. To lift the curse that gripped him. As Mr. Sholm said, tomorrow would be a new dawn. For all of us. Ah, ah, look <laughs> at all the lonely people. I know, I feel like we needed, you know, like some anime opening right there. Uh, oh yeah, where's the anime opening? All right, to be continued. <laughs> so we'll end here for tonight. Uh, next stream is Sunday, ten o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Pacific. Anyone got any announcements they'd like to share? Nope. Oh, I already shared mine <laughs> at the beginning of the stream. But yes, look out for Metro Rock Live, which was the J Rock festival that I um, put together and organized and uh, uh, had hosted at MetroCon. It'll be up on my YouTube channel and I, again, I will let everyone know on all my social medias at Manabingu. Everywhere. Yay. Yeah. Excellent. 
All right. That's all we got. All thanks for hanging out. Um, and we'll be back Sunday. Good night. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.